Robert Owen Butler is the Pulitzer Prize winning author of many novels and short stories, one of our most distinguished fiction writers. Uh, but here lately he's been uh, dabbling in uh, the thriller. His uh, new Christopher Marlowe Cobb uh, thriller, The Star of Istanbul, is just out. Bob, welcome. Thank you, Chauncey. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, of course, <coughs> I have to ask you, uh, why, why would a literary writer of your reputation um, mid-career suddenly decide to, to write a, a genre novel? Well, you know, I've, uh, it's not my first. As a fictionist, I have written um, science fiction, Mr. Yes. Spaceman. Yes. I wrote a book called Hell, set entirely in hell, uh, which is a f certainly a fantasy. Um, a book called Small Hotel uh, was an old magazine book of the week, and they called it a new old-fashioned romance. I could find you a history novel. I could find you a young adult novel. I could find you a a sex novel amongst my oeuvre. And this book uh, began with a very literary short story, mm -hmm. a book, a story uh, that I did uh, in my book called Had a Good Time, which was written based on my old, my collection of old picture postcards. And that story is called One in White. And in it, it had what I identified as a war correspondent, American war correspondent, um, covering the American invasion of Mexico in April of 1914. And that story, uh, that guy, that was in the Atlantic Monthly, very literary, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it won for them and for me a National Magazine Award in Fiction. But that voice wouldn't leave me. And then eight years later, Otto Penzler, the Dean of American Editors in suspense, thriller, espionage, and uh, mystery novels, read that story called me up and offered me a two-book contract to write at least two novels in that guy's voice. And being a literary man, my exact quote is, oh boy, you betcha. <laughs> and, uh, and I launched into it. So, I, you know, literary means you write from the impulse to articulate your deepest vision of the order of things behind the apparent chaos of life on planet Earth, all right? And if you look at CNN every night, uh, uh, major thefts of of, uh, of secret information, um, uh, terrorist attacks secretly planned and secretly thwarted, um, you know, governments overthrown by popular instigated uprisings, mass murders. I mean, you know, the, the world uh, assassinations of of major figures in the in you know in in the world. It's it, the the zeitgeist supports um, the espionage thriller as a as a very literary form. If you are really indeed writing from the literary impulse to tell you what the world's all about. Well, I've read most of those other books and mm -hmm. reviewed many of them: uh, the science fiction, the fantasy. Mm -hmm. I found them to be unconstrained by genre conviction, uh, right. genre convention. Seems like you're a little more plot driven in these books. Well, I think the world is more plot driven now. I mean, it, it, it's the, uh, it's it, that my attraction to a deeply plot driven genre is is not. I took the genre on and then made the vision conform to that. I feel like, and by the way, any given book here, uh, certainly the hot country is, um, well, it, it flowed out of a literary story, but I think that the, the plot was a natural outcome of what would happen from there. Um, <clears throat> but this is really a multi-part novel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Empire of Night, which I will be finishing within the next few days of my sitting in this chair, um, is gotten very personal and very strange and very quirky. He, Kit Cobb is evolving as a literary central character would. I know a lot of the genre series, they expect that the, 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 the essential personality and attitudes of the central character to remain same, the same from one novel to the next. It's not happening with, with Kit Cobb. Well, I, I read the first one, and he changes from the beginning to the end of that book. Even in even within that even book, within and that's that and book. that's another hallmark of that, I think. And mm -hmm. yeah, the, the espionage thriller has always been a little more literary than than others. Uh, uh, Graham Greene, uh, Somerset Maugham, uh, John right. Buchan. Um, 
had you read any of those? Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, and uh, and and our mutually beloved Eric Ambler. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. You know Graham Greene was I've, uh, is a, among my short list whenever people ask me who's most influenced you. And and he he I think with tongue in cheek at times uh, divided his work from in his novels and his entertainments. But a book like Stambul Express, for instance, is absolutely amongst you know his best serious novels as well. Yeah. And, and and I think. I think they as well, if you look at Mom and you look at Green and, and, and Ambler, they too, and Le Carre, they have been responding in exactly the same way I was speaking of, that the zeitgeist, the way the world is, is captured by this particular genre quite effectively. Yeah. When I read the first chapter of uh, Casket for Demetrios, yeah. with its account of the Armenian genocide, there you go. You know, I, I, I took my breath away. Absolutely. You know. um, you're finishing up uh, the, the title of the third book again? The Empire of Night. The Empire of Night. Are you going to say goodbye to, to um, Christopher Marlowe Cobb? I don't expect so. I mean, I, as I'm coming to the end of this book, it, the, he keeps, you know, it keeps opening up. And, and, um, and uh, no, there will certainly be a fourth, but it's a book by book yeah. assessment. But right now, there's a, there are four parts to this novel. Uh -huh. So uh, someday there'll be a portmanteau. I mean, there'll be a, a collection. I would think you know, so. A one volume. I would think so. And my, my wonderful editor, Otto Penzler, certainly has those kinds of things in mind. He's the guy who called them Christopher Marlowe Cobb thrillers. And I, I don't object to that. I, my tongue is a little in my cheek, too. But the thrills are of various sorts, I think, in these books. There's nothing wrong with selling a book or two. You know, that's, that's all right, too, isn't it? Yeah. Um, is it only a is it only a coincidence, or is there something in the zeitgeist that literary writers are turning to uh, crime or, or thrillers? I mean, John Dufresne just published a mystery. Chris Abani has a detective novel coming out, and you, of course, are, are doing the Cobb book. Yeah, and you know uh, there there are a number of folks who do that. I, they are resp I think they're responding in the same way I described a moment ago. Yeah. You know that, you know if you if you know and not only. Is that are these things going on in the world? They're being intensely um, portrayed in 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 the blogs in the blogs the blogosphere and in CNN in these short, intense, dramatic bursts of information. Even the way in which our synapses are now being rewired to receive the information of what's happening in the world is 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 gravitating toward plot, you know, the, the, the accumulation of, of brisk, intense, dramatic scenes that in a news broadcast is a kind of montage pastiche novel. But, you know, and I, all those things that, that literary folks, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the hidebound literary folks, tend to sneer at in, in this genre, mm -hmm. I think, are, are really terribly literary. Go back to Shakespeare. I mean, um, there were no more melodramatic plots wrapped around the most serious engagement with the world than in, than in the plays of Shakespeare. Right, right. And he got things going right away. Absolutely. Right away. And needed to. Uh, these thrillers are historicals. Yes. Uh, I could not read The Hot Country with its Mexican excursion during the Mex you know, uh, chasing Pancho Villa without thinking about Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, was that intentional or was that a happy it, it was inevitable. It was intentional, of course, but my intentions, um, uh, it, it, it's the cause and effect. They are after the fact intentions. The reason, one reason I'm drawn to that particular historical period for this genre is that the issues of the early 20th century are the issues of the, the issues of the 21st century. I mean, in that regard, Woodrow Wilson, the man who will keep us out of World War I for several years, in April of 1914 invades Mexico because he didn't like the, the dictator running the country. In order, and also in order to protect American oil interests, and he fully expected the Mexican people to welcome us with open arms as his, as, a, as their liberator. You know, and this is, 
a great American tradition. And, and the issues that are dealt with in Star of Istanbul, or which are slightly different, and in the Empire of Night, they, they are beneath, beating beneath those, the, you know, that strong plot are issues that, that have absolute and clear counterparts to this era. The books wouldn't be as good if I started being consciously aware of that as I wrote mm -hmm. and making sure that was clear. So I have to just accept the historical reality and be true to 1914 and be true to 1915 and the rest will take care of itself. Okay. The new book is The Star of Istanbul. Robert Olin Butler, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Chauncey.